In this video, I explain to you guys the functioning of a sixth order bandpass. So if you like to see the dimensions and a complete demo, stick around. We got that and more coming right up. What is going on guys? It's the Budget Base Head. Welcome back to the channel. Right now what you guys seeing on the screen is my most recent build of a 6th order bandpass. This is housing my SCAR IDEO VXF12. This is a 1500 watt RMS subwoofer, 3000 watts peaked. I picked this guy up over at SCAR's website. Right now what you guys are looking at is the different chambers that I have on the inside of the sixth order bandpass. And those little screw holes you see right there is for me to be able to remove the top of the sixth order bandpass in order to service it in case of any damaging or me swapping out the woofers. This is a dual chamber. This is parallel configuration. And each port is tuned to 25 hertz and the other, the smaller chamber is tuned to 50 hertz. And if you guys wanna know exactly the working of this, I'm gonna be sharing a few things with you. In order to get a build like this going, you're gonna need two different tools. Or in my case, I use two different tools. One of the tools that I use is WinISD Pro. That is what you're seeing on your screen right now. WinISD Pro is a pretty good tool to use when you trying to figure out exactly what your idea would sound like in a real world environment. So what you would do, you would come up in here and you would manipulate your box dimensions. In this case, I'm building a sixth order bandpass uh, enclosure, which does have a rear and front chamber. One of my chambers is gonna be two cubic foot the other is going to be one cubic foot. This is classically known as a two to one ratio. The larger chamber is going to be tuned to 30 hertz. The smaller chamber is going to be tuned to 50 hertz. So why did I choose 50 hertz instead of putting it one octave apart, which is by rule of thumb what you're supposed to do? If I make this one octave apart, which meaning that this would be 60 hertz, you guys would see that the graph would get in... Uh, a big increase down at the end. I don't want that. This does not look balanced. So I chose to go with 50 hertz, just in case someone is wondering about that. This tool also, this tool will also allow you to manipulate your vent length. As you guys can see here, my vent length and width are put into the tool right here and it gives, I'm sorry, my vent dimensions as far as length and width, I mean height and width is placed here in the tool and it gives you the length here. It self calculates the length. So I would know exactly how much space this enclosure is gonna take up if I were to build it. So once you crunch all your numbers in here, step one is actually loading your driver with its particular parameters. And once you use this tool to plug all the information in for your driver, all the information in for the box that you want to build, it will give you your vent length and things of that nature. And then you can use a second tool, such as I do, which is called SketchUp. SketchUp is primarily for any woodwork that you would want to do, carpentry, things of that nature. It does a bit more than that, but this is pretty much all that I use it for. And with those dimensions that I got from Win ISD, I was able to come over here and build or construct this box inside of this three-dimensional environment. So you pretty much want a tool such as this because what this tool does is save you time and effort. You can make all your mistakes, all your judgments, all your calculations in here based on the space you have to work with in the real world. That way, you before you cut any piece of wood, 
you would already know what things are going to look like and fit like. This is a great tool to utilize. So what I'm going to be doing right now is just stepping through the scenes and giving you guys a few views of what this would look like. The orange here is the front plate, of course. The green is the 60 hertz port. The little brown piece that you see up in here is actually a piece of dowel that I use for bracing in my ports. So that's what they are. The red, of course, is the baffle. This is dual labor, uh, dual lay layered. It's two pieces of three quarter inch material, giving it an overall width of a one and a half inch. You really want your, your baffle to be as strong as possible when building these type of enclosures because it is the one that's going to have to restrain all of that force. It's directly exerted upon the, uh, the baffle. And in this case, my subwoofer is nearly 50 pounds. So you want your baffle to be pretty strong. Once again, over here with the 30 hertz port is represented by yellow. And it has two of those dial bracings. These dials are approximately one and a half to two inches wide. I forget exactly what it is, but you will see that in the schematics later on in the real build. And you brace each one of these because this thing is going to be pumping a whole lot of air through here. And you don't want your porch to flex any. Over here, what you guys are looking at is the cut sheet that I use in order to construct this build. This build actually calls for one and a half sheet of plywood material or MDF material, whatever your material that you would require, uh, would, would rather use. I myself have gone with plywood in this build because MDF, though it does finish well as far as cutting and things of that nature, rounding over edges and things of that nature, you get that butter smooth almost. You don't even have to even sand uh, MDF in most cases, but plywood is lighter and it is much stronger than MDF. And with a 50 pound subwoofer, I did not want to be uh, lifting up on that thing using MDF. So what I did in instead was use plywood. It's a lighter material. It cleans up easier and it's stronger than MDF is. So this is your cut sheet right here for anyone that was interested in that. These are some of your dimensions right here. And also to the right of the screen, you guys would also see additional uh, dimensions of this enclosure. What we're going to be doing now is moving onward to the actual demo. What I'm going to be doing for you guys first is a base sweep. This base sweep is going to allow you guys to see exactly how this enclosure behaves under um, when it's powered. How each in the individual ports work together and individually of each other within tuning. There you go. Pretty much anything below 30 hertz is taken, um, taken care of by the 30 hertz port. The 50 hertz port handles anything probably in between uh, upper 40s and low to mid 60s. And believe it or not, guys, this is at very low power. I do not have the the radio turned up on this. Very low power. Once again, 
once again, if built correctly, this is very, very rewarding. I really challenge you guys to go out and try to build one of these. These things, they can be unforgiving if you do it incorrectly, but just, just know that if you use these tools that I just gave you and just a little bit of logic when it comes to building these enclosures, the output that you can get and the bandwidth that you can get out of these enclosures are phenomenal. You will be smiling like I'm, I'm a grown man and I'm smiling like a child in the candy shop right now, for real. This is real world music for you guys. This particular beat drops into the 20s. Really know, I really need you guys to get some good headsets to really appreciate the sound quality of this guy. Later on, I'm going to turn it up for you to see what it can really do. This is less than half volume right now. Port is basically a daily driver, y'all. It catches almost everything. But when it need help with the loads, that's what the 30 hertz chamber is for. turn it up for you guys a little bit to let you guys see <clears throat> in a minute to let you guys see that this thing is very very effective and efficient Turn it up for y'all a little bit.
guys, this thing is the gains are set at 2,000 watts for this subwoofer. That's it. This is a 4,000 watt system. I only set the gains at 2,000 watts. the shark fan flexing y'all seen it's not even turned up it's not even turned up Alright guys, so what do you guys think about that? In my opinion, the 6th order bandpass, when done correctly, is the most effective when you trying to get sound quality plus SPL. I just think that the 4th order does not come close to it. In most cases, the 4th order can get louder. In some cases, in most cases, the fourth order would get louder at a particular frequency than a sixth order. However, the downside to that is that the fourth order does not have the bandwidth of a sixth order. It's, it's a lot of people would call the fourth order a one hit wonder. I mean, that's not me hating. I'll build one to show it, to prove it to you. As a matter of fact, that'll be my next build is a fourth order for the same subwoofer just to prove to you guys that once and for all that the sixth order band pass is the best build for sq with s for sq and spl coupled but i don't want to drive that into the ground this uh video was just it was was highly requested by you guys um the the uh the band pass builds is one of my most popular videos in my archives so i'm glad you guys requested this it was fun building this and if you guys are new to the channel and you like car audio diy builds comparisons and competitions please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing